Hey everybody, Jennifer from Scrapping Under the Influence. I had done a haul video the other day where I kind of showed you um, the Tim Holtz watercolor pencils and I said I would come do a few little card examples with them. So that's what I am here today to do. So um, primarily we're going to use this uh, set from Stampers Anonymous, uh, Tim Holtz Holiday Sketchbook. This is available on Country Craft Creations right now. Um, and we're just going to kind of play around and see what we can come up with with this and what, um, you know, what all we can do with these watercolor pencils. Because quite honestly, they work a lot differently than um, watercolor pencils I've used in the past. Um, and truly, it's been a few years since I've even pulled those out. So uh, this is going to be definitely new for us. So um, let's go ahead and get started. Let me grab a couple things. And we'll get going. Okay, so we are going to start with a watercolor um, cardstock panel. So these are the same size as an A2 card front, so four and a quarter by five and a half. Um, honestly, I don't know where I got these from. I have like six or seven packages of them, and I've had them for quite some time. Um, but you should be able to find, you know, good watercolor paper pretty much anywhere. Uh, and you can actually use these on non-watercolor paper, but the watercolor where we are going to be um, using some water with this will kind of, um, what's the word I'm looking for? It just holds up better because it's heavier. So um, first thing we're going to do, we're going to stamp this little image. So I have it in my Misty just to make it easier. Um, if you are going to watercolor with the watercolor pencils and any kind of stamp, you do need archival ink. So I have the black archival ink. You, you basically need a permanent ink. You can't use any kind of water react. Well, you can, but just know if you use water reactive ink and then you're trying to cover, color over it with the watercolor pencils, it's going to react as well and you're going to have a mess. Okay. So just something to kind of keep in mind. So I'm going to go ahead and ink this up. And I kind of have an idea for what I want to do with this one, but we'll see. Okay, so I'm going to ink that up. Stamp that down. And I didn't quite get the middle like I would like. That I think it was entirely me not paying attention when I inked up the stamp. That, I think, my archival pads a little on the dry side. I haven't used it for a while. Okay. And we're going to go one more time. Because at this point, I'm positive my pad is a little bit dry and I need to look for a reinker for it. But that's okay. We'll get it figured out. All right. I'm going to leave this in my Misty because one of the things, one of the techniques that I've seen um, done with these, which is one of the reasons where I'm saying these are a lot different than um, normal archival ink, is the ability to color and then stamp back over it again. I'm sorry, not archival ink, watercolor pencils. I know what I'm trying to say, I promise. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and heat set this really quickly just with the little heat tool. Nothing, you know, super fancy here. Just to make sure this is good and dry before we come in here. And there's a couple of different ways that you can use the watercolor pencils. So I'm gonna find a good green. I think I'm gonna go with Rustic Wilderness. And right now I still have all of mine in their sets. And so this is in set three. I'm not sure if I'm actually going to take those out and just lay them in the tins and let them just mingle. <laughs> I haven't decided yet. Okay, so I'm going to come in here and I'm going to kind of get out towards my edges with the pencil. And because these are kind of a sketch stamp where we can make this kind of a messier look. Um, I think that's what we're going to try and do here. So you can just color with these, just totally normal, leave them as is and call it good. But if we come in here with the water brush and we get that wet, we can start pulling that color down and out into the middle here. What we get 
is a very nice blend and shading that, you know, if you're doing this with alcohol markers, it's a lot, I don't want to say harder to achieve, but it's not, you know, as straightforward. So right there, just that alone, we've got a very nicely shaded tree. But what I can also do, again, because the type of stamp it is, I can pull this out the other way too, so we can make this into more of a watercolor effect on here. So I'm just flicking from the edge of that colored area and just kind of flicking out towards, because I do want it to kind of blend out and about, okay? All right. So let's get some more color in here. Let's get some, hmm, what color do I want to go with? I want kind of a, well, let's go with speckled egg. And this is set one because I kind of want this kind of blue gray. And I'm going to go over these little snowflake areas because what I'm going to do, I'm going to do the same type of thing over these areas where I'm going to come back in with the water brush and pull that color out and kind of give us a little bit of a halo effect here. I'm even going to kind of do it not so much on those, so we're kind of going out and around. And I realize this one's a little bit harder to see just because of the color. But again, I'm just coming in and kind of spreading that color. And I am by no means an expert with the coloring and the blending and all of that kind of thing. I just find it really therapeutic and I enjoy doing it. I really kind of want that to be a little bit more pigmented. So let me grab some water, which I meant to get my, to fill this up ahead of time. So we're just gonna do this from my spray bottle and that's fine. Okay. And a paper towel, just to be safe. And what you can do is you can actually dip these in water to activate that pigment. And then when you color with them, it's going to be a little bit darker. And you can kind of tell as you do this when it starts to dry out by how it feels on the paper. because it will definitely have a different feel as that pencil dries. Okay. And then let's go in, let me find, I know kind of what I want. Let's try tumbled glass here. I think I want just a little bit more blue in places. As we're doing this. Okay. And then Actually, I know where I really wanted more blue. It's down here on the bottom. So I am going to be a lot heavier handed down here on the bottom. And all I'm doing is kind of following the lines of the stamp. And I am coloring right over that ink.
Okay, and you can kind of see it sits on top of the ink. I'm going to heat set this really quickly, and this will dry fairly quickly in here. Except where I got it a little wetter than I intended to, but that's okay. And you can see as it dries, you're seeing that color kind of pop more. But what we're going to do, and hopefully I didn't like inadvertently slide this a little. I sincerely hope I didn't. But I'm going to ink this, and I'm going to come in here, and I'm going to stamp this again right over the top of our coloring, and it's going to put that detail over the top. And my paper did slide ever so slightly. But the only place I can really tell is on the tree, so it's okay. <laughs> We're going to go with it. I'm going to pull this out. Get this out of the way for a second. And then I'm going to take a spotlight stamp stencil here, and I'm going to lay this on here. And I actually need some pixie spray, but I'm not sure where my pixie spray is, so I'm going to use some little pixie dots instead so it's a removable adhesive that I'm going to put on the back side of this. In theory, <laughs> I was going to say it doesn't want to come off of its backing. Okay, so I'm going to just kind of position this over my image and I'm going to grab some ink. Okay, so I'm going to go over this with some ice spruce distress oxide just to kind of fill out the outer edge of our panel. And with this little spotlight masking stamp, the center part of our card is going to stay just like it needs to. And I'm able to get that color on around our stamped image and leaving it highlighted there in the middle. And if I don't put the lid on that, I'm going to lay my arm down in it. I know it. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and pull this off. And you see, we kind of have that um, spotlighted image in the middle. So what I can do now is I can come back with my two colors. So my um, speckled egg. And again, I'm going to get that just wet and kind of fill in here and there just so that our lines aren't maybe quite as defined. And then I'm going to do the same thing with the tumbled glass to pick up that blue again. Then I'm actually going to come in here just with the water brush and kind of blend that out a little bit. And I am kind of watching that I don't get too close. Actually, no, I do want to kind of pull on my edges of my masking just to kind of soften those edges. Okay. And then I want, where's my other sprayer? Aha, there we go. I'm going to take just my other little sprayer here because this one I can kind of, because again, the oxide is water reactive. So I'm going to just spray so I get that a little bit splotchy. And let it sit for just a second. And then come in here and heat set it again. 
which where are my tweezers okay so I'm gonna grab my tweezers and my little gun and we're gonna heat set this which you do need to do with oxide ink anyway because it does not dry as quickly as the normal distress ink or most normal inks and you can see as I dry that that my water spots are showing up just beautifully okay so now what I would do is find my stamp set <laughs> which I have set aside somewhere here and now I cannot find oh my god seriously what did I do with it oh my god it's right here if it were a snake it would have bit me and I'm just gonna look at what my sentiment options are here and I'm gonna just use a normal stamp block for this lining it up um, I am going to grab a different black ink pad, however. Actually, I'm going to grab black. I'm going to grab a gray. Just because I know this one's nice and juicy. And there we have a one layer, very simple card. The only thing I'm going to do now is I'm going to kind of trim this down just a touch which I do typically do on most card panels so that I can mat them um, and uh, clean up my edges because sometimes you know when you're stenciling and, and ink blending and whatnot the edges of your cardstock get a little funky okay so let me find a good base for this I'll just tell you now I have tons of like really heavy smooth eight and a half by eleven card stock that I use just for cards um, so this is not something that's available at country craft creations at the moment um, and I don't know that it's something that she wants to bring in because she does not have nearly as many card makers so I'm just going to make this a normal A2 card, and you can see where I swatched this one out of that corner. <laughs> and I'm going to score that in half, which you don't need to watch me score it. You guys know how that works. And fold that. Apparently not varnish it because now my bone folders disappeared too. Seriously, it is a straight up disaster in here. I can't even tell you. I guess I'll just do it with that. That works. Okay. And then that I'm actually going to pop up for a tab. Some foam strips. These are also out of my card making stash, so. Ah! This is a very simple one layer that we can 
mail without extra postage, which is always a good thing. And then if you wanted some more dimension on that, you could add some little gems and some little sparkly things and whatnot. But for our purposes today, I'm going to leave it like that. And there's our first card. Okay, let me kind of reset for a second and I'll be right back. Okay, so for the next one, this is going to be a little bit different. So one thing you can do with these stamps is they will color on black cardstock. So I've got a panel for a slimline card. So this is eight and a half by three and a half of smooth black cardstock. And I've got a masking stencil with the three panels or the three panes on top of it. What I'm going to do is we will eventually be putting this in the misty and lining up the stamps in it like so. And we're actually going to color directly on those. But before we do that, I want to add kind of some color around our edges here. And I'm using the stencil so that we can um, uh, keep our edges clean so we get that frame look around the entire stencil. So I'm going to do the trick again where we come in, we're going to dip the picket fence pencil, which is in set one, I think. Yes. Set one in the, in the water. I'm going to come in on my edges here and I'm just going to kind of, which I don't know that I want to do it that way. I think I'm, I'm going to actually going to dry color it. I know I started doing it that way, but I think I really want to kind of dry color and then we'll come back with the water brush. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of lightly scribble around my edges of each one of my frames. Because, okay, so when, and I, you know, some, I think some businesses still do this. I know when I was a kid, I grew up in a small town, the downtown businesses would always like frost their windows. Okay. So you kind of have this outline around the outside edge of their window, and then they would, you know, have somebody come paint some like a snowman or, you know, reindeer or whatever on the inside of this little frosted edge. And sometimes they would just do the little frosted edge and nothing else. So that's kind of what we're doing here. And I am laying down a fair amount of the pigment here because we're going to come back over it with the pencil. And I'm going to do this in all three panels. So really, I'm going to kind of trace around them and then kind of do this. And kind of thicken it out from that point. And we'll come back with the water brush to kind of smooth this out. And I think I'm actually going to find a paintbrush as opposed to using the little water brush this time, just because I'll have a little bit more control. And then this one, because our stamp for up in this panel is bigger, I'm not going to go quite as nuts on my panes on this one as I did on the other two, because the other two are both smaller. Okay, so let me grab a paintbrush. the other paintbrushes because the one I want is not back right behind me. One second. Okay, so very small paintbrush here. Um, so I'm going to get this just a little bit damp. I don't want it super wet. And then I can kind of come in here and smooth out 
my frosted windows. So I am dipping my paintbrush, kind of wiping off excess on my paper towel, and then coming in and And I didn't do it on that one. And what that's doing is smoothing out my little scribbly frost, essentially, and giving it more the look that I'm after. very very thin so I'm not real good at doing this and talking at the same time <laughs> so if I get quiet it's because I'm concentrating so I don't totally screw this up and have to redo it again because I've already screwed this one up once or well not screwed up the idea I had did not work as I planned um, I think I need just a little bit more white up here and this one I'm actually going to do it yeah I need just a tiny bit more white okay so what I'm going to do now move that for a second I'm going to grab my misty grab this whole panel so apparently because this is just how my day is gonna go I did my you know little frosted windows and then it didn't record when I did the stamping technique so which you know this is gonna kind of give me a chance to kind of fix what I didn't like about how that came out so I am gonna go ahead and line up I took my stencil off and I'm going to kind of line up my stamps again. And I'm going to pick them up in the middle and open them up. So what this technique is, and I watched this um, on YouTube the other day and really was excited to try this because I just thought it was kind of neat. What they were doing basically is coming in and coloring with the watercolor pencils directly on the stamp. So I'm getting this wet and I'm coloring where on the stamp where I want that color to go. And if it works as intended, what you end up with is kind of like, there's a technique in stamping called no line stamping where you take an image, you stamp it out with like a really light kind of gray ink and then you go back in with alcohol markers and color and what happens is that gray line kind of disappears as you're um, going through and um, coloring and when you're done you have like this image um, that looks like you've you've drawn it by hand or you've watercolored it or whatever. I am terrible at that. <laughs> so if this is going to kind of give us that look without it being um, a total train wreck like when I have tried to do that, then awesome. So what I'm doing is I'm just dipping the tip of this in the water and you'll notice none of this color is coming off in my water which 
quite frankly, I think is amazing. Um, and I'm just very carefully, because I think my first one that I was not super happy with the results was partially because I got a little carried away with the water portion of the project. So, we are going to try and be a little more precise this time and not have it maybe get as wet and hopefully this will work the way I want it to. Um, I think part of my issue, quite honestly, is um, to it being um, really kind of a tiny image to be doing this on. And I actually have another stamp over here that I might try this on in just a minute as well. And if I do, I'll actually put that at the very end of the video. Or maybe I'll do it as a reel on my Instagram. Maybe I'll do it that way. Okay, so I'm coming in with, this is vintage photo. And I'm going over these trees because I want to get that color on the trees so that you see. So you get that detail. Okay. Um, I do know when I was watching, you know, some demonstrations of this the other day that the lighter colors going onto the black cardstock do show up better. As you can tell with like the, um, the white that we did for like frosted window panes. Frosted window panes. No, I'm not going to sing. Nobody needs to hear that, even me. Um, <laughs> so I'm going to kind of just go on the trunks of my trees. And this one does not want to play as nicely as some of these other colors, which is fine. And then I wanted to hit my buildings with just a tiny bit of yellow, like kind of where you would see lights. And we've got like some lamp posts here as well. Okay, no lamp posts down on this bottom part. I'm gonna take speckled egg and go over my little snowman here. And the outlines on my buildings. Just because I think that'll be a nice contrast. Let's see if I can get them to really pop this time. Um, I'm going to come in with faded jeans down here. Try and kind of get their clothing and I'm gonna do oh, what did I have here rusty hinge to kind of give some color to his coat as well and then I'm gonna find where I put my white one there we go and that's what I'm gonna kind of come in here and try to get all of my little snowdrops with snowdrops seriously like it's been it's been a morning let's just put it that way okay and you can kind of tell and I know I've said this already on one of the other cards you can kind of tell when um, your pencil starts to dry from touching it into the water you'll be able to tell like when you hit that point on the and honestly the only one that the pigment kind of comes off of the pencil into the water out of all of these is the white which I know when you're trying to do white ink is always kind of tricky anyway because it's just it's a very hard 
color to get to work right and most white ink pads like you have to heat set them because otherwise they will literally never dry um, it's kind of a whole thing and then I'm gonna get underneath their feet here and I'm gonna get down on the bottom here all right so this was where I ran into the issue last time is some of this has kind of dried so I've got my little sprayer here and I'm trying to just as lightly as I can because we need it to be a little bit wet in order for it to stamp but I don't want it to be super wet and cross your fingers that it works this time <laughs> because my other one it was okay let's see I don't have any, either enough pressure or enough water this time no not wet enough okay let's try it one more time So some of it worked, some of it didn't. Like I said, it was really kind of, it was a neat technique, but quite honestly, I think my, um, which I wonder if I can do it in layers like that, like one color at a time. That seems to work better because you can see the definition on that tree better. Um, but what I was starting to say, I think my, my, um, stamps to try this technique with on this are probably a little more detailed than is ideal for this. Well, I don't know. As I keep going over it, they keep kind of stamping out better. Okay, so let's do this because I know too, once it dries, it kind of tends to pop a little more. So let me grab, because of course I put this away thinking everything worked and then went to edit and lo and behold, I'm missing an entire section. And then I'll show you the one that didn't record that's a mess. Okay, so I'm gonna dry this. Because really, once you dry it, it does show up better. So this one actually did work better than my first one, I gotta say. Yeah, so see how that color really pops once it's dry? So this was my first one that didn't record that it was too wet. And you can kind of see how it ran. We didn't have the detail that we have. So um, that actually worked out much better. So let me just grab just because it's over here right behind me I know right where it is um, one that I think will be a little bit better example of how to do this well, maybe. one's detailed but it's a kind of different so what I'm gonna do is take the smooth side of the watercolor paper and I'm gonna take my stamp here and since this is white rubber from Maker Forte um, this actually should show up way better when we're coloring on it so I can kind of show you so the other method to doing this was to spray the stamp, which is, I think, where my problem was on my first one. So I'm not going to do that. I am going to take, oops, Rustic Wilderness this time. I'm going to dip that in my water. And I'm going to come over my trees. And this one I think is going to be a much better example of how to do this because you can see how it's picking up that ink 
I'm sorry, not that ink. It's not ink. It's pigment um, on those trees. Like, how cool is this? Oh, yeah, that's... Wow, that makes a huge difference. Having a bigger area where you can really get in there and get that detail. Okay. And I didn't see my the floral stamp that I had in mind for this. I'm not seeing back there. Um, but I forgot I had this one, and this one's really a neat one. Okay. So let's just test this. And we're just gonna stamp out our green and see that worked better. It's still gonna have like that watercolor look to it, which I mean, hello, it's watercolor pencils. That's kind of, you know, the whole point is you're gonna have that. And that's kind of what you want anyway. Okay, so let me get those other couple of trees that didn't really show up because I don't think it was wet enough. Okay, so then I can come in here with, we're gonna do tubbled glass to make our snow show up on the white. So in all these little white places, I'm going to do tumbled glass for our snow. All right, cross your fingers. Let's see how this is gonna work. Okay, so we're getting our lines. Again, probably a little more detailed than is ideal for this technique, but you know what, it's okay. And then for my last, I'm gonna come in with, and see, I can tell by looking at that. It's a little bit wet. So I'm going to actually kind of dab that and then go back. And so because those are still a little bit wet, when I do go back and stamp that again, they're coming back out um, with a little bit more detail because it's re-wetting the pigment and it's picking up some more of the detail that we might have otherwise missed. So I'm going to go over this with hickory smoke just to pick up the detail on the church and the little houses here. Okay. decent bit of pressure on there. Let's go one more time in a couple of areas here. Just to try to pick up some more of that detail that didn't quite get picked up. Okay. Much better. So I'm going to go ahead and take that off. I'm going to move that out of the way. We're going to go ahead and dry it. Oh yeah, because once you dry it, really, you're getting more of that scene. I've still got, I mean, this, this is a technique that is definitely going to take a fair amount of practice, honestly because I've got areas where I'm still getting too much water and you're not picking up the detail. 
but it's a technique that has some really neat potential for what you could come up with for this. So there we go. There's our technique on that one. Okay, one more card to go. Okay, so for the last card, I'm actually going to use a different stamp set. So this is the sketched cardinal stamp from Maker Forte. This one is not one that is available at um, Country Craft Creations, but this one is going to be a good one to show you. Where's my... Um, just kind of what this... Uh, Make sure I'm in the right place again here now. I don't want that. Where's my other? Mouse pad thing for the misty. Sorry. Forgot I wasn't using a rubber stamp. I need the bigger. thicker base piece in the Misty. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and put that down. I'm going to ink this with, again, archival ink. And, oh my gosh, this pad is dry. I'm going to have to go look for a reinker for this today. Because it is super dry. Ooh, okay. Yeah, it's way dry. Like, it is not inking worth anything. So I am going to need to get another one of these. Or a reinker for it, because I don't think I have the reinkers for this one. Okay. Oh, and of course it slid on me. No problem, we're going to turn him over, which actually I think it's going to look better with this one anyway, so that's okay. Where is my other magnet? That will help. Oh my gosh, seriously, like, could this be a train wreck? It is me we're talking about, so probably. It's very likely it will be. <laughs> And he's not quite lined up where I would like him, but that's okay. Oh. We will make this work. It will be fine. Okay. Oh, yeah, like I said, my pad is really, really dry. Honestly, I could probably come in with like a black marker after the fact and like fix that. Yeah, I'm going to have to because this pad is not cooperating and I'm on watercolor paper, which is not ideal. Or I'm on the rough side of the watercolor paper. So what we are going to do is I'm going to find, do I want that or do I want fired brick? Fired brick pencil. I'm going to make sure this is dry really quickly. Okay. And since I am going to stamp this again, once we color him in, I'm going to just leave this in the Misty for now. So I am going to come in here. Fire brick might be too dark. Maybe I do want barn door. Actually, I'm going to do both. So we're going to do fired brick anywhere where there might be a shadow. So we're going to kind of treat this like we would if we were using alcohol markers where you're going to have darker areas and lighter areas. So I'm going kind of around the outside like so. And then I'm going to come in with the fired brick and really put down a lot of color. 
and because we're going to go after this with the water brush it doesn't need to be perfect and we are on the um the uh what's the word i'm looking for the textured side of the watercolor paper so i'm going to take my water brush and i'm just going to kind of pull this out because i do want that same watercolor effect because I do want it to come out and over the lines. And I had another watercolor pencil somewhere that was more, not like, like more of a flat brush and I could not find it to save my life this morning. So that's okay. So I am just pulling that color out because this Honestly, I was, I, I'm so thrilled that I got these because when I ordered this stamp, like last month, I think it was, this was what I envisioned with it. I just wasn't sure how I was going to make that happen, if that makes sense. So we're going to pull this way because I do want it like it's a sketch and a watercolor. Okay. So I'm going to get my brush cleaned off get the red off of that which it does come right off so and then I'm gonna take let's see I think we're gonna do fossilized amber to get his little yellow beak here we don't have cardinals in Utah which is makes me kind of sad because we had them in, when we lived in Georgia and we used to get them all the time in the backyard and I we had a, a nesting pair that lived in the trees back behind our house and it was just amazing I absolutely loved them um, okay so we could come in here with some green for this branch I want crushed olive mm, trying to find something I can test this on and kind of see what color I'm going to get. I'll just grab another sheet. Nope, too yellow. Definitely don't want that one. So where is peeled paint maybe? Yes. Okay. So peel paint. I'm going to do the same thing over here on our leaf. And then I'm going to come in with walnut stain, whoops, maybe, kind of just along the branch. Okay, and then we will come right back with the watercolor pencil, I'm sorry, water brush, and the same thing again. We're just going to pull that color out. I'm not trying to be real precise. I'm just trying to get it to have that like hand watercolored effect. All right, literally that easy. Like how awesome is that? And then just to give some more definition to the black lines, I'm gonna do the trick we did on our first card. And I know I'm going to have to come in on his beak with um, because that black is just not playing nicely with me today. But you know what? It's okay because I'm literally <laughs> going to come in just like so and darken up that little area. And you'd never know that my ink pad is too dry and it will not stamp. <laughs> Okay, so there is that card. We just need a sentiment. Let me see what's on here that I can use. I'm going to go ahead and lift this up. I probably get ink all over my fingers and I just have to be careful not to get it on my hands. So I'm going to pick that up. I'm going to use a normal ink <laughs> on 
this. Maybe. So just normal black ink. And to make sure that this stays put because those pads are kind of slippery and I don't know what I've done. I have like, oh my gosh, what are they called? They make these little sticky mats for the Misty. I don't know where mine is. I have one. Okay, I'm gonna go over that one more time. It says Cardinals appear when angels are near. Okay, and there you go. How cool is that effect? And how simple was that? That took not, what, five minutes? If I didn't lose things, it would have taken five minutes, but you know, this is me we're talking about. So, so that is all ready to go on a card front. So there you go. We've got our experiment with the watercoloring, which honestly, it's not, I got it too wet, excuse me, too wet, but it worked. Like you can color on the stamps and then stamp out on the black cardstock. And then our other card where we did the coloring and the blending and, and whatnot. And there you go. There are probably a thousand other ways we can use these. Um, I'm still learning right along with you guys on these. I'm gonna, you know, keep playing around, see what else I can figure out, but there you go. Watercolor pencils from Tim Holtz, available at Country Craft Creations. Um, the Stampers Anonymous stamp, which we used here and here, also available. Um, and there we go. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.